Good morning. Thanks, Sam, for the introduction. As Sam said, two years ago today, I was living and working as an intern with International Justice Mission in Calcutta, India. Living in a city of over 13 million people and working to free minor victims of sex trafficking from brothels was a rewarding, unique, challenging, and at times stressful environment to live in. Yet when I moved to work in India with International Justice Mission, I stepped into an office that was strongly unified in its community. And living and working in a community that was so unified was such a blessing. And as I neared completion of my 18 months with IJM in India, God began to show me just how important it is to dwell and work in unity with those around me. You see, I worked in a small office of about 30 people, and those close quarters helped to magnify and show me the importance of living in unity with those around me. And as I work here at Samaritan's Purse, God is again showing me and teaching me the value of living and working in harmony with those around me. Unity is so valuable, yet I believe that it is something that we unconsciously neglect as we go about our daily tasks and routines. In discussing unity this morning, the first biblical passage that I'd like to look at, if you have your Bible, is Psalm 133. I'll be reading from Psalm 133 in its entirety. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. I just love the picture that we get in this passage of unity. It's such an amazing picture of the blessing of unity. King David is the writer of Psalm 133, and he says that it is both good and pleasant for brothers to live together in unity. And while we know this to be true, listen to the way that he describes unity. David says that unity is like a precious oil, something, something that is rare and something that is valuable. Now we know that oil was an extremely important commodity in David's time. And David says that this unity is not just like oil, but it is like a precious oil. Then as David continues in the passage, he describes unity as the dew of Mount from Hermon falling on Mount Zion. And he says that is where the Lord bestows his blessing. Now think about dew on an early morning in the summer. Just close your eyes for a moment with me and imagine and think about how you often walked barefoot through the dew-laden grass on a summer morning, maybe as a child, or maybe you still even do that now as an adult. And just think about the refreshment and the sense of purity and newness that it brought to you. Think about the joy that it brought to you. This is what I believe David is talking about. He's saying, in unity, the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Just think about that. In unity, the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Unity is life-giving, and in this passage, we see how it refreshes and blesses the people of God. Now that begs the question, how do we go about building unity amongst ourselves? The fabric of unity is delicate and can easily be destroyed if we are not conscious of how we can build unity with those around us. In in reading James chapter 3, verses 9 through 10, we find out how we can build unity or bring destruction. James writes in chapter 3, verses 9 through 10, With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. One of the best tools we have to build unity is to choose to use our words wisely. And honestly, how often do I recognize that the power of my words can bring life and build up or bring destruction? James shows us our own hypocrisy in this passage when he says that out of the same mouth come both praise and cursing. 
We praise our Lord and Father, and yet we curse men who have been made in God's likeness, who have been made in his own image. When we fail to speak words that bring unity to people around us, we miss opportunities to refresh others and to be a blessing. So as Zechariah 8, 16 says, speak the truth to each other. Now that might sound easy, speak the truth to each other. But as humans, we often find it hard to speak truth into the lives of others. However, I do believe that there are ways in which we can speak truth to those around us. We can speak biblical truth into the lives of those around us, or we can speak words of encouragement and unity that come from circumstances that we see around us. For example, two weeks ago, the OCC international team had about 30 international field representatives and international staff come to Boone to plan for our upcoming Global Connect conference in April. And one individual in particular worked really hard to bring everyone to Boone and to coordinate all their travel arrangements, their hotel accommodations, and their meals. I heard several of our international field representatives thank this individual for her hard work and for all that she had done to make everyone feel welcome. This woman did work really hard, and people recognized her efforts. People could have left the meetings without acknowledging all that she had done, but they chose to speak words of truth that in turn brought encouragement and blessing to this coworker of mine. You see, unity and truth, they dwell together hand in hand. Unity is essential to the healthy growth and existence of the body of Christ, and we must commit to building unity with our brothers and sisters. If we cannot speak truth to those around us, how will we be able to speak truth to those who are outside the church walls? Remember that the fabric of unity takes time to craft. Sometimes we think that unity can happen right away, but we must commit to being intentional about crafting unity. It cannot be built on its own. Remember that in unity there is blessing, even life forevermore. My exhortation and my encouragement to you and to myself is to be intentional about speaking truth to someone that you come in contact with today. If you see someone complete a task well, tell them that they did it well. Commit to speaking the truth, even if it feels awkward, even if it feels unnatural, even if you're not sure how they may respond to your words. Your words, my words, they matter. They are important. Remember that your words have the power to build up or to tear down, and seek to use your words for God's glory and to use them to bring refreshment and blessing to others. Thank you. Let's go to prayer.